okay let's discuss the remaining math operators also so we will look at the multiplication operation so let me write a multiplier it is taking two inputs so let's call input first input let's make them four bits wide input a input b now output width so in case of adders we discussed when you add two n bit numbers the result can be up to n plus one in case of multiplication uh, when you multiply two n bit numbers the result can be up to two times n the width of the output can be up to two times the width of the input operands in our case inputs are four bits wide so we'll make our output as eight bit wide so let's call it p to indicate the product and that's it it's very straightforward you can simply write assign p equals to a times b multiplication operation and n module So we'll just test it also. So V log multiplier V sim work dot multiplier. Okay, we'll make all of them unsigned. And let's make a as some number okay so let's take decimal 11 and b as decimal 7 let's take tick t7 the result is 77 as expected okay now there's a type i type to multiplier here that is why here also you are seeing multiplier instead of multiplier but the file name is multiplier so you can correct it and try it okay so no big deal it's working as expected now similar to your addition if you are expecting your inputs to be sign numbers you should write it as uh, dollar signed dollar signed a times dollar signed b then only the result will come properly okay otherwise yeah, it will be a wrong output when you give negative numbers sometimes it will be correct sometimes it will be incorrect especially if you are mixing uh, positive and negative numbers output will be wrong if you don't put dollar sign here okay so that's about multiplier now i will quickly show you how multiplication can be done in hardware so take our same example we have uh, 1011 which is 11 times 01117 okay so as usual like our decimal multiplication this is called our multiplicand and this is called our multiplier now you will take one bit at a time from your multiplier and you will multiply the multiplicand so here it's very easy you will just check whether the multiplicand bit is one or zero if it is one you will just duplicate your multiplicand here if it is zero you will just write zeros okay so first one is one so i will simply write one zero one one next one is also one like in decimal you will move your terms one bit left after each row okay one one zero one again one so one one zero one now zero so they will be all zeros now each of these terms as usual they are called partial product so we have four partial products here and you will just go ahead and add them so we have one here one plus one zero remainder one one plus one plus one one remainder one 1 plus 1 plus 1, 1, remainder 1, 1 plus 1, 0, 1, 1 plus 1, 0, 1, 1. And this is the result. So if you check this number in binary 
one double zero one one zero one that is 77 in decimal so this is 77 which is the right answer this is 11 this is 7 now one confusion which may come is when you are adding the partial product if the remainder is more than one what happens okay so same scenario can happen in decimal also but you rarely encounter it where your remainder is more than nine okay so that can happen there also but in binary this can come very often for example i have okay so one zero one one and i'm multiplying with one 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 which is 15 so this is 15 this is 11 so as usual 1011 when you're adding okay this one is 1 this is 0 remainder 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 remainder 1 now when you add here 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 okay so 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 1 is 1 0 0 1 1 plus 1 this is like 3 plus 1 in decimal so 4 in that case you will write only this digit here and your remainder becomes 1 0 so when you add it at this position you have to take the remainder as 1 0 so 1 plus 1 1 0 plus 1 0 remainder so we have 0 0 1 so we will write this 0 here again remainder is 1 0 this 1 0 plus 1 we have 1 1 we will write 1 here again remainder is 1 that 1 plus 1 1 0 so here you will see the result is 8 bits in the previous case you could fit the result in 7 bits but here you need all 8 bits now let's see whether it is right or wrong so in binary we have one zero one zero zero one zero one which is 165 and our problem was 11 times 15 which is 165 so the answer is right okay so keep this in mind when you have reminder uh, it can be more than one bit so you need to do it properly okay so let's come back to our first problem itself and let's quickly see when we go for actual hardware implementation how this might get implemented okay so it was very easy in uh, doing it in simulation but when you write the same value code using an implementation tool like our quarters which we will use what quarters might be doing to physically implement it how this can be implemented using gates same way we saw how adders are implemented uh, using full adders you just chain full adders or half adder uh, which are composed of gates which are ultimately composed of transistors right uh, same way let's quickly see how this multiplies uh, might get implemented so let me take a general case i am multiplying two again four bits number so let me take my first number as a0 a1 a2 a3 right this is just like 1011 so here our a0 is 1 a1 is 1 a2 is 0 a3 is 1 so on and so forth which i am multiplying with uh, b0 b1 b2 b3 so when you do this first you have a0 b0 then a1 b0 a2 b0 a3 b0 then a0 b1 a1 b1 a2 b1 a3 b1 then we have a0 b2 a1 b2 a2 b2 then a3 b2 and finally we have a0 b3 a1 b3 a2 b3 and a3 b3 and finally you add so this will come as the first bit 
of the product these two together second these two these three together as third so on and so forth and when you are adding them whenever there is a carry that carry should be going to the next state if that produces a carry that should go to the next state and if you have a carry from the final one it will come out as the most significant bit because here you can see how many terms will be there when you add one two three four five six seven but this can also produce a carry like our previous case which will go as the most significant leftmost bit uh, that's how you can get up to eight bits okay so we will keep uh, this structure in mind and let's try to do the hardware design now when you look at it you will see this is our partial product one this is partial product two this is partial product three and this is partial product three four in partial product one you will see every term here has b0 same way pp2 it has p1 in every term here p2 and here b3 in every term here you have a0 a1 a2 a3 here a0 a1 a2 a3 so you will see like a general uh, structure is happening whenever you do the multiplication okay so that's what we are trying to implement also so first we have a0 b0 so how can we do it that's just an and operation so we can take an and gate and we can supply a0 here and here we can supply b0 so same way let's take four and gates and we can make these four product terms right so we here we have a0 here we'll have a1 b0 here we have a2 b0 here we have a3 b0 now all the terms have b0 so let me write it here a0. so what i can do is when we go for the physical implementation i can take a single wire and just connect all these wires together here and provide b0 at the end of this wire so all of them will get b0 so that i don't have to explicitly write b0 here so we can remove the b0s from here because all of them are going to get b0 through this line through this wire okay so if you look at it next line next partial product uh, similar structure but instead of b0 everyone is getting b1 right and it is shifted by one position so let's make four and gates here and we will take connection and connect all of them to be one here so there are connections here now next terms also a0 a1 a2 a3 so i already have a0 a1 a2 a3 from the top so what i can do is okay let's take these wires and let's take a connection from a0 here and just like this let me use a different ink thinner one okay so let's take a0 from here and give it here a1 from here a2 from here and a3 from here are we done yeah this product is done now finally when you write the answer you have to add these terms vertically right so a0 b0 there is nothing to add here so a0 b0 will be first bit of the product p0 no issue now here what we need is i need to add this a1 b0 with a0 b1 so the output of this and gate i need to add with the output of this and gate so for adding 
we will just use a half adder in this case because I have only two terms. If you have three terms, we can use a full adder. Even if you use full adder, no issues. Uh, the carry in bit will just ground it. Okay. Otherwise, you can use a half adder and it will give the sum output. It will give a sum when you are adding. That is the second bit of your product. So, this is P1. Now, suppose when you are adding it, it generates a carry that is very much possible so that carry should be added with the next stage okay when you add these three bits to that result this should be also added so how can we do it so we will we have to add this one and this one anyway for the next term to that i will add this carry also so here i need a full adder because i have three bits here and that is representing addition of these two terms but the final product term is not these two bits. We need to add this, this with the previous carry and also one more term from the next partial product. So we will wait for that. Uh, so same way we have full adder here also. So we add this guy with this guy and we have a full adder here also. We will add this guy's carry here you will add this guy's carry here and this output with this carry okay so here we can leave with half adder because we have only two terms so full adder with uh, one of the input as zero so half adder will do actually half adder now i'm not completing this thing you can try it as an exercise you will see uh, this follows this regular structure so if i treat this and gate and an adder as a single unit okay so i'm representing it as a box like this once you complete this entire design you will find that uh, your circuit looks something like this so okay so this is same as this box so you will have four boxes like this for your second partial product then you will have again four boxes like this and you will again have four more boxes like this and the first bit of product will be directly coming like this for second bit it will be coming like this for third one you will add the output of this with this one and your third bit will be coming like this here it will be like this like this like this and like this now when you connect the carries remember you are connecting it towards the left so you will see like the carry will be going like this from each box and from this final box it will be coming like this okay to the next box in the next row so here it will be going like this here it will be going like this and here the final bit will be coming out like this that's how we are going to get eight bits of the product and the first row will be composed of only this and kit so this is how your multiplier is going to look like and this structure this is what we call as an array multiplier okay so there are different kind of multipliers possible and this is one of the most straightforward Again, advantage is disadvantage. Uh, it's beyond the scope of our current discussion. Maybe later in computer architecture course, you will see like uh, why this may not be that good. What are the other methods for multiplication? I mentioned this because your implementation tool uh, from your simple description as p equal to a times p, he'll have to build something like this using gates. So you know this full adder, they're also composed of uh, gates which we have seen before. So from this one line description, this I mentioned, this style is called a data flow. Your input is going to output. From this single line of data flow description, your implementation tool, he will have to design something like this, basically quarters for our course. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so after multiplication, we have two more operators, uh, division and modulus operator. I'm using the same module. I'm not changing the module name or anything, just to show you that it works. So let me do 
a divided by b and for division it will be like integer division okay so you will get only the integer part since you are getting only integer part the output width can be same as the input width because the minimum value of b that you can use is one right so output width can be same as input width so if you run this we need to recompile so if i give a's value as say some 15 d15 and b as let's say 2 d2 and when we run it you'll see this is the output let's see them unsigned so 15 divided by 2 he will just say 7 so this is more like our integer division you will get only the integer part how to deal floating point numbers in hardware is entirely a big different topic okay we will try to discuss it later uh, especially the IEEE floating point representation as well as so called fixed point representation of these floating point numbers that we will see later uh, currently the normal division operator he will be doing the integer division you can do signed and unsigned same as multiplication and addition now the actual hardware implementation of divider that's a different thing okay so even when you are doing it manually uh, you know how you do multiplication so if you look at this structure uh, you can see there is a regularity about how we do multiplication but division is not like that so if i have a number same example let's take uh, 15 1 1 1 1 divided by 2 0 0 1 0 I cannot have a parallel implementation of hardware which can just do it like that I can have it okay of course you can write the entire truth table for this division and you can do it but unlike multiplication division is more like a sequential operation so you will see like first you will see whether this will go in this one you will find no then you will put zero then you will check whether this one will go this one then you will put one here and we have one zero here then you will do the subtraction one then you will put this one same way you do division in decimal okay so you can see this is not happening in parallel what the next step in division depends upon what you did previously so division is more like a uh, sequential operation so i cannot have a single hardware a general structure which can do division for me it's very difficult to have a general architecture like the one we use for multiplication uh, because of that if you see many implementation tools if you use division operation in your description hardware description the tool might tell you that he is not able to implement it depends okay what does it might not say that there are other tools which will tell you that he doesn't know how to implement this division so this entire topic that we will again discuss later under Vedlog itself. Our entire Vedlog language, uh, we will be later dividing it into two called the synthesizable, synthesizable Vedlog and non-synthesizable Vedlog. So synthesizable Vedlog, that basically means something you can actually implement in hardware. Non-synthesizable means which you cannot implement in hardware, but you, of course you can simulate and see it okay so that topic again will come later uh, again the division operator for some tools it is synthesizable and for some tools it is non-synthesizable he cannot actually build it so that's why i'm not going into the detail same is for the modulus operator also so he also behaves the same way it behaves in c he will be giving the reminder to you but again many of the tools this is not synthesizable you cannot uh, implement it directly in hardware from your data flow description okay he may say like he doesn't know how to implement this operator but of course you can simulate and see the output what really happens so these two operators uh, we are not quite interested uh, we are mostly 
usually interested in our addition, subtraction and multiplication operations. Okay, so the only remaining operators are the logical operators that we will discuss in the next tutorial.